بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم now the next thing we'll see the ntp configuration now basically ntp configuration is very simple like uh, in this case i'm using three routers the router 1 router 2 and router 3 and i want to make sure that the router 2 should be my ntp server so whichever the device you select as a server we need to select ntp master command where I'm going to tell that this device is the server and this 2 represents the startup value if I don't define uh, the iOS by default uses the startup value of 7 so we can use any number other than 0 and 1 and uh, what, let, let's say here I'm giving the startup value of 2 now the other devices the router 1 and the router 2 I'm going to configure them as NTP clients now these two devices are my NTP clients now the clients need to refer to the server like here, I'm using the loopback address, the router 1, uh, 12.001, the loopback of the router 1, that is a loopback 0, should be the server. And make sure that we do have IP reachability to this loopback, because it uses unicast on UDP port number 173. So two things you need to make sure that the loopback, the, the NTP server address must be reachable via unicast. And the next thing is, if we have ACL configured in the transit network, Make sure that it is allowing the UDP 123 traffic or the NTP traffic. So in my case, I don't have any ACLs. And for reachability wise, I'm going to configure the OSPF and advertise all the interfaces to provide the reachability. And just one simple command, NTP server 12001. So again, so let's go and configure the basic step here. I got three routers and all the three routers are uh, I didn't configure the OSPF, so I'll quickly configure the OSPF here. So I'll say 0000, order that's everything. And I do have the initial configurations like IP addressing is already done. So 00, 00 means advertise all the things, not recommended in the production networks, but here just for testing purpose, we'll provide each of these OSPF. Now, once we are done with OSPF, now expect the neighborship show IP OSPF neighbors. The neighborship should be up, and also I should see the routes. The next thing I'm going to configure the router one as my NTP server. So we need to select the NTP master, and we can start with any of the startup value. Uh, default it takes seven, so I'm going to use two startup value here on the router two, and the router one will be configured as NTP clients and I need to refer to the server and make sure that you you should be you should have reachability to the server so that this will ensure that the clients are able to reach the server so for the same commands I need to add on the router 3 as well so I'll simply copy paste on the router 3 of course I'll also check the reachability to confirm that now for verifying uh, we need to use some commands like show NTP status and show NTP associations. Now the first thing what I'll do is I'll try to verify what is the clock here. Show clock. Now it's based on the current time and I should expect the same clock on the other side by default because based on the IBS again. The clock may be differ slightly but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the time on the server assuming that it's October 20. Uh, just change it to October 20 and here it is October 15 and October 15 here so probably the client should contact the server and update the time to October 20 here that's what I'm expecting so we'll go on the server I'll change the time to like 10 a.m. let's say and so probably the month maybe you can say 20 October 2017 so if you say show clock you'll see the time changes here and what I should see is I should also see the time should synchronize it takes some time because now now one thing we need to know uh, meantime we'll, we'll see like the update of the time a on the client is done based on incremental which means it's not done once it's based on the incremental and the time it is going to take to synchronize between the client and the server based on the time difference like here the time difference is just five days probably it will not take much time i think here while i'm testing out but probably if you have a month's years of difference between the current time on the client and the time on the server uh, the 
that will take more time to synchronize. So you just need to wait for some time for the synchronization. And always the client will have a startup value of three because on the server we have given the startup value of two. So the client will always have the plus one startup values. So I'm expecting the time should synchronize. So it may take some more time. So meantime, let's let's see some other other commands like show NTP associations or now when I say show NTP associations, it says the reference clock is 12.001. So it's not completely synchronized here. So I'm expecting the synchronization. Okay, fine. So you can see I just paused for some uh, few minutes. Probably you can see the time is being synchronized here. Now, if I say show clock, you can see the time changes here as October 20 on the client, as well as I should see the same thing on the router 3 as well. So if I say show clock, you can see the time is synchronized. I can also use some other commands like show NTP associations. It shows you uh, the reference, the server, the IP address. And this is actually the local loopback address. Startup value of the server is 2 here. So basically, these are the options here. Now, additionally, we can also configure something like authentication. The authentication is optional here, but again, it is recommended. So, so probably what we can do is the company we, to enhance some more security. We can actually authenticate the NTP servers. So, which means let's say the router two is saying he's an NTP server, and the client is going to authenticate the NTP server and verify the configured password. If the password matches, then only the client is going to update the time. Because, because you know, in the network, it, it can be easily like, you know, uh, an attacker actually can spoof as if he's an NTP server and can provide you the wrong time information. And based on that, maybe most of the applications may not work or maybe some digital signatures or some ACLs may not work if you don't have the correct time on the networking devices. So, it's always uh, recommended to enable NTP authentication. So to enable NTP authentication, we need to add this configuration additionally. Like on the client side, we just did this configuration without authentications. But if you want to enable authentication, we need to add some commands like NTP authenticate, and then we need to configure some key and some password. And then we have to tell that key should be trusted. And then while you're defining, we need to specify that key along with the server. And this is something we have to do on the clients, R1 and R3. And on the server, we need to enable the authentication, the same three commands. The first three commands, whatever we have enabled, the same three commands we need to add. Of course, there is one more command already configured on the server that is NTP master command. So these are the additional configurations you need to add on the server, on the server and the clients, if you want to enable authentication. So it, it's something recommended always to prevent any unauthorized time servers. Again, uh, most of the time we don't use any external clocks because the external clocks uh, can be attacked and the time can be changed because we don't have any control over the external clocks on the internet. So always company wants some security and it's always better to have some internal time servers. So like here, in our case, we are going to configure our internal time server, the router two, and it is synchronizing the time with the router one and the router three, the other networking devices.